Calculating the mean of just a raw set of numbers, so 10 numbers, for example, is pretty straightforward. You add them all together, you divide by how many there are. If, however, the data is represented in a frequency table, either as a more common frequency table like this, or a grouped frequency table, then we need to find a way of actually calculating the mean in an easier way, okay? Because otherwise, the whole point of a frequency table is that I haven't written out the data in a raw format. I haven't got 20 zeros, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 all the way along, uh, 20 times, and then I've got 50 ones, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and then I've got 32s and 10 threes and 2 fours, okay? If I had that as one big sheet of paper of numbers, and then I had to add them all together and divide by how many there were, that would take me a long time. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's ultimately uh, the problem. So we want to speed this up. We've got the t it all, all the data in a table, so it makes sense that I would, in order to add them all up, I'd work out, well, how many, um, well, what would all the zeros add up to? What would all the ones add up to? What would all the twos add up to, okay? And so what we do is we create another column where we multiply, in this case, the score by the frequency, okay? So score times frequency. So we have 0 times 20, well that's just 0. So all those zeros, those 20 zeros, add up to nothing. We have 50 ones, okay, so they'd multiply together to make 50. 230, so that's 60. 3 tens, that's 30. And 4 twos, well that's 8, okay. And once I'd worked that out, I'd worked out what each line would add up to, I can add all of those together to get myself a final total. So 50 plus 60 is 110, 140, 148. So if I added up all those numbers on that sheet of paper, they would all add up to 148. And I now want to divide that by how many there are. And that is given to me by how many the total frequency. So the total frequency adds up to 20, 70, 100, 110, 112. So we've added them all up, and we're going to divide that by how many there are, 112. So 148 divided by 112 gets me approximately 1.32. And it's useful to make sure that you, that, that makes sense. So a score of 1.32 is somewhere around there, between the 1 and the 2 score. And that's 50, 30, 80 people, okay, were between 1 and 2. Okay, and that, in the grand scheme of things, makes sense. The majority of the people score between 1 and 2, and so 1.32 makes sense as an average score. Okay? Now... What we can do here is to generalize this. We often write this column as being our x column, and this column as being our f column, x for score and f for frequency. And what we've done is we have multiplied x and f together. Okay, So this is x and f x times f, we can just put those letters next to each other. And what we've done is we've added all the x, f's together. And a way of writing down, adding them all together, a symbol for that, is this sigma sign. It's a Greek letter that we use to mean add them all together. So we've added all together all those x, f's, okay? And we got out with 148, and we're going to divide that by the total frequency. Well, the frequency is given by f, and if we're adding them all together, it makes sense to write that as sigma f. And that is the formula for calculating the mean in this case. 
So how can we then go on and do that with grouped frequency? Now, the problem here is I don't know what that original data was. And if you're trying to find an S, uh, a mean rather of a set of data where you don't know what the raw data was, all you can do is find an estimate. So what we will find here is an estimated mean. It won't be exact because I don't know how many of the 500 bits of data, for example, are towards that bottom end. They might all be uh, zeros and ones. Or they might be pushed up towards the end. They might all be nines and tens. Either way, it will skew the data. So how do we find an estimate? Well, what we could say is that let's assume that they're all in the middle. Let's assume that they're all nicely in the middle at five, in the mid of the group, the middle of the group. So that's why we find, first of all, the midpoints. Now, the midpoints are just the middles of the groups. So the middles, in this case, the first one would be five, the middle of zero and ten. Now, the next one is the middle of 10 and 30. That's 20. So that would be our second midpoint. And the halfway point between 30 and 80 is 55. OK, and that would be our third midpoint. So we can use this midpoints column as my x's. OK. The frequencies are the f's. And so the next thing I need to do is multiply the x's by the f's. The midpoints times by the frequency. So we've got 5 times 500. So that's 2,500. Or 2,500. 200 times 20. Well, that's going to be 4,000. Then 20 times 55. Well, that's going to be 110 for 2 times 55, then add on another 0, so 1,100. Now, the formula says that I've got to add up all the XFs. So I've got to add up that final column. So we have 2,500 plus 4,000 plus 1,100. So 7,600. And I need to divide that by the sum of the f's, or the frequencies added together. So 500 plus 200 plus 20 is 720. So I need to find 7,600 divided by 720. So I do that on the calculator. And that gets me roughly 10.6. To one decimal place. Okay? Does that make sense? Well, the majority of the data was between 0 and 10, but there's still a sizable amount between 10 and 30. So 10.6 seems appropriate. Quite close to that original group, but slightly over, okay, because of the sizable amount outside. So 10.6 is the estimated mean in this case. It's not the exact mean, because we just cannot calculate it. It's an estimate in that case. This one, however, was the exact mean, because I exactly knew how many got each score. Okay, But in this case, I did not know the original data lengths.